Hey everyone, this is Maximilian. It's been a while since I put one of these up, but that's because I've been very, very busy. So, be thankful. You're getting a new episode of Pokemon, and in this episode we're doing more glitching. Yay! Although this glitch is probably a bit more common to the game. More people tend to know this glitch than any other, and that is the old man glitch. I'll be going over it and how it works once we get to that point, but for now, we're going to plow our way through the gym at Fuchsia City because we kind of need to use Surf before we can actually do the glitch. So I figured I'd give Snorlax a run since I hadn't actually used him since I caught him, and he's not too far off pace with the team as far as level is concerned. So I whipped him out of the box, gave him a try, and he's actually really, really good. Um, Amnesia is ridiculous against Psychic Pokemon. Because um, special stats in this game I take into account both special attack and special defense. They're combined into one stat. They weren't actually separated until the second generation. So if you can raise your uh, special um, your special defense against Psychic Pokemon, they can virtually do nothing against you. Because um, strictly speaking, they don't really have a lot of um, moves that aren't typecasting. Although Drowsy is one of those exceptions because it does have Headbutt. But like if you're fighting like a Kadabra or a Jinx, something like that, and you raise your special defense, like they are basically screwed against Snorlax because it has a ridiculous amount of defense and health. It's it is essentially the juggernaut of Pokemon. <laughs> and rest is retarded. Unfortunately, um Snorlax is a little slow. So you do take an extra turn to recover more than you'd think after using rest. However, it does cure status ailments, and it heals you completely without the use of items, and I honestly think that's a little ridiculous. Once you get him to a high enough level, he becomes nigh unstoppable. The only time at that point at which you can lose them is if you run out of PP. Although, generally speaking, that doesn't exactly happen very often. But, on to Koga's Gym. A lot of the trainers here have a variety of Pokemon, mainly Poison type, and for some reason, I completely forgot that Arbok had Glare. So all my Pokemon are getting paralyzed, so I had to make a few frequent trips to the Pokemon Center to cure status ailments, because I didn't really feel like using full heals. Oh well. Not much you can do about that. And I figured I'd fight every trainer in the gym just because we could use the level grinding, since we're basically holding off on a bunch of trainers for the Mew Glitch. You get the idea. But Koga is considerably um, above the curve compared to the other trainers in this gym. Like, you'll see that the, the norm level for the majority of these Pokemon is somewhere around uh, the mid-30s, like uh, 33 or 34. Uh, Koga's median is about 39, so definitely several levels higher than our team. However, because our team is so well-balanced and all of our Pokemon are raised evenly, we have so many threats that we can throw at him that it actually um, a com it compensates for that difference. So if you ever thought raising your Pokemon evenly was a bad idea, here's proof that it isn't. So definitely recommend that you do that if you're ever going to play the game. Because it may not look like it's doing much good for you because you may be under under the curve or under par with the rest of the trainers that you come into, uh, come into contact with, but you do have a full arsenal of equally balanced and powerful weapons at your disposal as opposed to one really big Pokemon and then a bunch of BK Randys filling up the other five spots. So, definitely do that. I, ever since I started doing it, I've just noticed I've done better at these games, and it, it's because it works. Like They even tell you in the guidebook when you bought this game, I remember saying in the guidebook, you, need, you should raise your Pokemon evenly. It's going to be harder, but it makes it more worthwhile because your team becomes stronger as a result. And of course, I was like, nah, I know what I'm doing. And I did whatever the heck I did, and that usually meant having like a level 30 Charizard by the time I got to Misty. And of course, since I had absolutely no backup plan, she just wiped the floor with me. So it took me quite a while to get past her. Not to mention Brock, considering... Oh, Char fighting Brock with a Charmander is so impossibly hard, you have no idea. I would not recommend doing it if you don't have to. That's also why I got Butterfree in the beginning of the game, because I didn't want to have to go through that. Like, the, frust the frustration you go through is just absolutely ridiculous, and it's not worth the time. So yeah, 
Word of advice, if you're going to fight Brock, don't do it with Charmander. And raise your Pokemon evenly. Bring me back to that point over and over again. Keep raising them evenly. Um, oh, yes. Remember those drawings that um, I told you my roommate was going to do of Arcanine and Alakazam? Well, actually, um, he did the drawing of Alakazam. He may have... I may have recorded it. I'm not sure. But uh, he actually did a video, like um, kind of like a tour video of the house, like what I did, like a setup video, quote-unquote. But he actually went through the entire house. And he, in that video, he also did a time lapse of him drawing the Arcanine. So I'm going to post a link to that video in the description. Uh, if you like his videos, go ahead and sub him up. He's a really neat guy. And he draws fairly good Pokemon for doing freehand, which is I think is pretty cool. And who knows, maybe we can bog him down with a few more requests. Go ahead and send him a request. But the most important thing you guys should be doing this episode is commenting for the Elite Four poll because this is one of the last few gyms, hence... You need to comment for your favorite and break the ties that I have right now so that I know what Pokemon I'm going to use come Elite Four time. So leave a comment for your favorite, vote for your team, blah, blah, blah. You know the drill. And hopefully we can get somebody with more votes besides Gyarados and Dragonite because they're just running away with it. Like right now I think I have maybe four or five or six different Pokemon tied with like seven votes. So you guys got to shake that up for me. I'm counting on you to do that. Go ahead and post a vote for your Pokemon that you want to see. And I swear, if you all spam Lapras, I'm going to kill somebody. <laughs> I am not raising Lapras unless I'm, unless I'm allowed to use rare candies. Because that is just going to take way too long. Way too long. Let me make myself clear. Way too long. Don't even think about it. I know some of you guys suggested it on a previous video, and... That's funny, I get it, haha, ha, but please don't make me do that. Seriously, don't. I'll cheat my way out of it. After all, I'm the one playing the game, not you guys. Still, whoever came up with that idea, it's brilliant. You are absolutely devious and psychotic, and you get kudos points. So take that with whatever, I don't know. Take that grain of salt, however you will. But here's Dragonair, doing what Dragonair does best, and that is wrapping people while they're paralyzed. <laughs> it's so dumb. But it works, especially on higher level Pokemon, when you don't really have many other good moves. I mean, Slam does more damage, but Slam, I've noticed, is incredibly inaccurate. So as soon as I can, I'm going to forget that move. I'll probably forget Agility first, because it doesn't really do anything. Like... I know, like, in the anime and other things, like, they use agility quite a bit to increase speed. But you're essentially sacrificing a turn to gain a speed advantage over your opponent. And since this is a turn-based game, you're never actually going to be able to take two turns in a row. Um, the only real advantage to agility is if, like, say you're in this instance where you're significantly lower in level than their Pokemon. And, and more li in all likelihood, they have a higher speed stat than you. Using agility may give you enough boost to bump over their stat to where, when the turn cycle resets, you may be able to go first. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but in all reality, you could just paralyze them, and then they become instantly slower than you by default, because that's part of the effects of paralysis, is um, a default slow in speed. Um, a Pokemon that's not paralyzed will always be faster than one that isn't, regardless of their speed stat. So, agility's basically worthless. Just a little tidbit. So I'm going to get rid of that as soon as I can. And um, I think what I'm going to do is when I demonstrate the old man glitch, I'm going to duplicate Thunderbolt and teach it to my Dragonair. Because um, I figure, well, if I have infinite Thunderbolt TMs, it's okay if I waste one, and I'll just use it for now. But I'm also going to let you guys vote for what TM slash HMs I'm going to teach my Dragonite once I get it there. Uh, Thunderbolt is amazing. It's probably one of the best five moves in the game by a long shot. Like, it's up there with Hyper Beam and Ice Beam and Psychic, you name it. But, I'm going to leave it completely up to you guys. So, if you want to do something absolutely crazy, like, I don't know, Solar Beam, Strength. No, don't do Strength. Please don't do Strength. At least make the moves good. Like, um, okay, so we'll say Solar Beam, uh, Fire Blast. Hmm... I assume you're going to want to keep Hyper Beam because it's one of the best moves in the game. And why not? 
try attack. I don't know. You can basically teach a dragon Pokemon anything. Like, obviously, you can't teach them anything. Like, you can't teach them psychic-type moves because they're not psychic. But you can teach them essentially anything that involves massive destruction. So go for it. So now that we've surfed our way from Pallet Town to Cinnabar Island, I find that's the fastest way to get there for initially hitting Cinnabar Island and putting it on your map. So I just walked into the Pokemon Center to register it, and I grabbed my Master Ball because I'm going to show you how to duplicate that. If you walk into the laboratory at the southwest corner of the island and go to the last door on the right and hand that guy your fossil that you got from Mount Moon, uh, I don't know if it actually takes a certain amount of time or if you can just walk out and walk back in, but he'll resurrect it into the Pokemon type that you got. There's also another fossil that you can get in Pewter City. I'll get it later just to show you guys, but that one will get you an Aerodactyl. So, other than that, there's just a bunch of people that want to trade for Pokemon, which suck. So, not much else to do in there. Now, onto the old man glitch. The first thing you want to do is fly to Viridian City. Now, you may have talked to this old man before when you were passing through here. If you did, that's fine. I don't think you have to do it again, but it doesn't hurt to do it. Uh, what happens is, when you go into a battle like this, it, um... Since your trainer name is changed from whatever your name is to Old Man, as it's displayed in the script, they have to store your trainer name somewhere so that the game doesn't forget it and it can load it later. Well, the brilliant programmers decided that the best place to put this would be on that coastline on the right side of Cinnabar Island. And actually, those characters have hexadecimal values, again, referencing the ever-so-exploitable hex database. So, um, depending on what character you have in the second through seventh slot of your name, it will determine not only the type of Pokemon you encounter, but also the level. I think it's the second, fourth, and sixth determine the level, and third, fifth, and seventh determine the Pokemon. Or vice versa, I can't remember. But I know it's every other slot is a combination of Pokemon and level. And since there are like a bajillion missing no slots, odds are you're going to hit a missing no. So, what you need to do is encounter a missing no. Make sure that you have the item you want to duplicate in the sixth slot on your item slot. Then what you do is when you either kill the missing no or run away, I think you can run away. You'll notice that the Master Ball now has a funky symbol with a 9 by it. Um, when you end an encounter with a missing no, or with any Pokemon for that matter, um, the game will register a value and based on whether or not you caught the Pokemon or you didn't. Um, the value for not catching the Pokemon is 128, and the value for catching the Pokemon is 256. So, since I didn't catch the missing though, I killed it when it was a wild Pokemon, um, the game registered the value 128. Well, it just so happens that um, when that 128 is registered to the Pokedex, because that's how the Pokedex tracks which Pokemon you have, which Pokemon you've seen, caught and haven't caught. Uh, not seen is obviously zero. Seen but not caught is 128. Seen and caught is 256. The um, For whatever reason, and I'm not entirely sure why, but the Pokedex slot for missing no is actually the same hex value for the sixth item slot in your pack. So, if you encounter a wild missing no and you don't catch it, then the sixth item in your slot, if it's duplicable, will have 128 copies of the item. And you can test it out, that's actually how many you have. It's pretty interesting. If you do catch the missing no, it actually increases this value to 256. Although, catching missing no has been uh, known to corrupt game saves, so I'm not going to try it. 128 is more than enough, especially since we can get all the missing no's we want in this game, so it doesn't really matter. So, that's how the missing no glitch works. Uh, from a text standpoint and basically from a gameplay standpoint, like you probably don't really care about the hex values and stuff, but I figured I'd at least tell you about it. And at least it makes it interesting when you explain it and they, you just have to like say it works because it does. I hate it when people give those kinds of answers. Oh, by the way, level 141 Pokemon, even though Missing No has absolutely terrible stats, refuse to let you walk away from an encounter and really do damage. So this one was a bit of a struggle, unfortunately. I'm kind of embarrassed. Because, like, I, I always kill Missing No. They're never this hard, but I happened to pick a trainer name that resulted in a level 141 Missing No. Um, I don't know how that happened, but whatever. So, I duplicated my Thunderbolt TM, and I'm going to teach it to Dragonair. But, in the next episode, what we're going to do is we're going to go to Saffron, hopefully. We'll stop by Peter City and grab that other fossil. We'll fight Sabrina. It'll be the last gym and the last pull. 
And then I'll ask you guys what you want to do from there, because really, it's wide open. So, thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in a little bit.